这场 talk 讲者是那个 David， 然后 David 是那个 GCP Google Cloud User Group 的成员，然后就是他们公司是 g e n o b i 然后他们现在很喜欢用 Python， 然后就是也常常在 Python 一些活动里面出没这样子。那我们今天欢迎他来分享，谢谢。呃，大家好，等一下 talk 是用英文的，但在这边先跟大家报个歉，就是我当时报名的时候没有想太多，就选择用英文来报，但是其实讲者的英文很破，我只是本来想说很多朋友可能都会用英文报的，所以想说哎没关系，多我一个英文破的也没有关系，就后来发现其他人包括什么都只有报中文，然后这一次我只看到我是用用破英文来讲的，所以大家这边先跟大家不好意思一下，那为了弥补大家，我把这个 talk 这 talk 叫 Markdown 做的，那我已经把这个 talk 的连接。放到了 Hack Folder 上面，所以如果你实在不听听不懂这讲在冲沙小的话，你就 check 一下那个 link， 然后看看说我的投影片上面写什么，就大概知道我讲什么。OK， thank you， thank you everyone。So today my topic is write your own micro data processing framework in Python. So before the talk, I will talk a little bit about my company. My company name is Clear Cloud. It is a company I found with friends from Python community. So Ting, Andy, Michelle,、um, you may know know them. They are my partners, and it is a company focused on data and AI technologies. And one of my one of our product, Clear Studio, is an AI video producer. So basically, it can transform an article into video automatically. So you, if you want to more know more、uh, details, you can just check our website, triple、uh, w. dot clearcloud.com, and a little bit about today's agenda. I will use five minutes to brief,、uh, introduce the data processing framework nowadays, and I will use ten minutes to introduce the pipeline pattern used in data processing framework and how pipeline actually works. And I will use the last ten minutes to introduce Django P, which is a micro data processing framework written in Django. So there are lots of data processing framework nowadays. So those are some of the data processing framework you can find out. For example, the PySpark, which is part of Spark, and the Dataflow, which is written by Google, and the MapReduce, which is another data processing framework announced、uh, kind of、uh, five to seven years ago, which is also written by Google, and that we have TaskFlow, which is part of the Open OpenStack, the famous.、Uh, Cloud computing framework and the Ruby, which is a, another data processing framework contributed by Spotify, and the, the last but not least one, Scikit-learn, which can also be considered as a data processing framework. So,、uh, we can do a very simple abstraction of data processing framework. So basically, there are three layers. The first layer is the application layers, such as MapReduce, Hive, and then the second layer. Is pipeline layer, and I will describe later. And the third layer is task execution layer, which contains the metric queue and the clustering service. So, what is pipeline? The application and the task execution layer is, is are more clear. But what is pipeline layer do? So, by definition, a pipeline is to connect together complex, time-consuming workflows, including human tasks, together. Uh, the definition is, is clear, but what the pipeline actually do is not clear yet. So that's explained with some examples. The first example is from TaskFlow, which is part of the OpenStack. Yeah, you, as you can see, it defines two tasks: the task A and task B, and it uses a flow, linear flow object, to define the relationship between each task. So the task flow has task as a flow, so that's the reason why it's called TaskFlow. <laughs> And the task task define the works, and for control how to execute execute them. So, for in this example, it shows that if you want to run task B, the task A need to be done first, and the output of task A will become task B's input later. So basically, it defines the relationship of different tasks. And the task flow is more complicated than、uh, the previous example. It has different Flow include linear flow, which is the previous, which is used in the previous example, an order flow, and a graph flow, which can be used for more complicated relationship between tasks. Therefore, it has the ability to create a really complex workflow. You can check the TaskFlow website to find out more examples. 
but we, I won't go to the detail for each framework today. Another example is Luigi. Luigi is a Python module that helps you to build complex pipelines of batch jobs. It handles dependency resolutions, workflow management, and visualization, which that means it is the same purpose with different approach because the test flow pattern is very important for data processing. So here comes an example for Luigi. It also defined two tests, a test called foo and a test called bar. But unlike the test flow, it, it didn't use a separate flow controller like test flow. It used a required method to define the dependency. So let's see the example. If I want to execute, if I, if I want to run the job full, uh, it will check the required method defined in the, in the class. And where full runs all bar, all bar here, defined in the required method will be checked. And if, if the system, if Luigi finds out this job has, name, has not been done before, it will trigger the correspond bar test if it is not yet been run. So with this kind of method, uh, Ruji can run the task dependency and, and generate a, tap, a dependency graph, just like this. And you can see the first, the first node here is the target test, uh, the job one to output. And it will check all the dependency job need to be run. And the, these all dependency will also check, uh, are they able to be Run. If not, it will further expand to find out all the dependency work, and, and finally, all corresponds and dependence work will be will be done, and the final output can be can be generated. Uh, it is another example uh, used in the Spark. In Spark, actually, it has a class just called pipeline, and uh, it has a definition on the document. A pipeline is a simple pipeline which acts as a and estimators, and a pipeline consists of a sequence of stage, each of which is either an estimator or a transformer. Uh, a little bit hard to explain, but to understand, but we can just check this example. The example here uh, is a, a generally a, a normal task for natural language processing. So basically, uh, there's a tokenizer. Tokenizer convert a sentence into words. And there's a hashing TF, hashing, hashing term frequency counter. Uh, well, <coughs> hashing counter for, for transfer the term into the frequency, frequency count. And the later one will be the logistic regression. And the pipeline just combine these two stage together. So the pipeline is just used to train heavy NLP tests. And, the, and if you're familiar with Psyche Learn, like, you know, also have the same kind of pattern because they have the same usage. Okay, the last example is from Dataflow. Dataflow also defines a class called pipeline. Uh, the description is, is harder to understand, so we just watch the example. The example here, in fact, it's just the, the same as the previous one, the Spark one. It, just, just, it works just like Spark, expect, except it uses a batch-like way to chain this test. So basically, the, the P here defines the data source, and, and then it pipes to, to the first, first worker, and the, the input and the, the output will become the input for the next task, and the, and the following, just like that. <coughs> so after looking at uh, after we review this example, so what is pipeline? So basically, pipeline does three things. The first, it is it it can it do the time-consuming task execution. So basically, it needs to be asynchronized and can be executed uh, on the clusters. And second, it do the flow control. So it can uh, we need to need, we need to we need to use a pipeline to control the execution order between tasks and uh, need to define the dependency and uh, we have need to have the branch. Uh, branch control in order to handle more complex ex case. So, for example, uh, we can define if task A return true, then we run test B. Otherwise, we run the test three, C, test C. 
The third usage is that the pipeline help uh, easy workflow reuse. So we need to we, we don't need to repeat ourselves to repeat the code once and um, once it. We need only to repeat our code. So let me introduce Jungle P. A Jungle P is a Jungle native micro data processing pipeline inspired by Google Pipeline API. It is initiated by me. Currently, it, the version is 0 0.1, means it is still on a POC stage, which means it's a proof of concept now. And the, the repository is on GitHub. So if you find out the, the, the package is, is useful for you, please go to check the website. So I will answer some questions before I go to further details. So why I call the project Jungle P? Because I use Jungle Q as the under test operation execution layer. What is Jungle Q? A Jungle Q is a multi, a multi processing distributed test queue for Jungle. And I'm very lazy to name my project, so I'm just using the same pattern for the Jungle P. So, so Jungle Q, so, so, so Jungle Q, called the Jungle Q, and the Jungle Pipeline, I will just call it Jungle P. And what is Google Pipeline API? Uh, the pur the pur purpose of the Pipeline API is to connect together complex time-consuming workflows, including human tasks. The goal of flexibility is workflow reuse and the test ability. Importantly, no tasks or DPU are consumed while workflows block on external events, meaning many, many workflows can be in flight at the same time with minimum resource usage. So it is a very good framework, help you to handle uh, big data processing. So does that sound good? But in fact, most of the the pipeline framework I introduced has the similar feature. So why I choose to use the pipeline, Google Pipeline API? Because it enables developers to express data dependency while achieving parallelism. So that's the, the example for the Google Pipeline API. It also defines two texts, but we don't need to have the extra flow controller or no extra required method to, depend, to define the dependency. You can just find out that if I want to uh, run the ADD2 task, then it should be, you should run the ADD1 task twice, and then ADD2 job can be, can be done. So we don't need to additional information to define the relationship. The relationship is, can be auto, automatically discovered. So the last question is why Django? Uh, because Glia Cloud loves Django. All major systems in Glia Cloud is written by Django. And in fact, we wrote, uh, think Andy run the Django workshop. You may know that. And the Django P use Django nice ORN features to store the task and the dependency between tasks. And I will describe later. So the design is quite simple. I only use five models to, to write the, the Django P project. They are pipeline, slot, barrier, and the pipe in the future in the future. So what is a pipe? A pipe uh, is really simple, just, just like, like that. Basically, it is an, an abstract class for pipeline. Define a time consuming task by overriding the wrong method. So the the pipe here is an abstract class. So so the wrong method will write non improvement error. Because you need to implement the run method in order to really use the, use, use the model. And there's a special property called class path, which is important. Because the class path identifies where the engine can find the task definition later. So, well, well you want to use a pipe. It's really simple. You, the only thing you need to do is just inherit the pipe and define your job here then you are ready to use the framework. And if you are a user, then the pipe class is the only thing you need to know. The, the, the other four model is only for internal use. And after you define the, the, the pipe, uh, you can just initiate like this. So you, you, you can send some parameters inside. So I want to, for example, I want to cloud website. Uh, 
on cluster. So I, I define a heavy work pipe. And uh, the wrong, in, inside a wrong method, I just uh, cloud, uh, download the website and do some parsing and store the results. And then I can just initiate with the website I want to, I want to uh, uh, download. And if you check the class path, you will find out it stores the location of the functions. And then you, the, only thing you to do, the only thing you need to do is you call the heavy work dot star, and then it will start running. Another class called future. Future is an internal use class only, which holds the pipeline return results. So it has two states. A state waiting means that the pipeline is running, and the result is not ready yet, because the service is is fully asynchronized, so the future will hold. Will, will, will <coughs> so in that case, the future will be waiting if the pipeline is not done yet. And another state is done means the pipeline is finished. And there is a special property called after all pipelines, which records all dependency of the, of the future object, which we will see how we how I use it later. So the jungle P knows how many pipelines need to be done before current one can fire to run. The third class is called pipeline, which basically is just the, the, the database representation for the pipe object I just previously introduced. So it stores pipe config to database, and it, it has a special parameters called parameters. He store all arguments of the pipeline initiate while well, it initiate. He can store values or a reference to another pipeline's output. And the third class is called slot, which is a database representation for the pipeline output. So just like future, but future is for uh, slot. The slot is for persistence, and the future is for code for for running code. The, the five class is called barrier, which is a special, cl special class I define. So each pipeline will have a barrier. barrier. Barrier is used to prevent pipeline run before its dependency are satisfied already. So you, you will see that it has a many-to-many -many relationship to other slot, which means the other output, the output of other pipeline it needs. So unless all the related slot has been done, the barrier won't, won't, won't the barrier will prevent the target pipeline to be to be able to execute. So, so let's go back to the pipe and try to look deeper inside the design. So the simple code in fact uh, has a lot of Things to tell to uh, to be able to tell us. So, for example, for the ADD2 uh, task, it is in fact it's a generator, which is important in in our design. And in the in the in this line, the pipeline A, I call it pipeline A, it, it yards a pipe and get the result from the control control loop. And, second, and, the, and the result will be passed to another pipe. So the simple code, in fact, tells us a lot of things. First, it implies pipe A don't need to wait, because it is not a generator, just a return result. So it, won't be, it will just execute synchronously. Second, it implies pipe B, it depends on pipe A. The pipe B, because of pipe B, the, uh, the argument of the pipe B is the result of pipe A. So, so the, the jungle P will catch, catch this kind of hint and know that, oh, I should not run pipe B unless pipe A is finished. And it also implies that pipe B is a heavy task and the pipe A is a light task. And uh, here is the, the, the main control loop, which is the most important part of the jungle P project. And it's a little bit long, but I promise it will be the, 
most complicated code in this talk. So basically, the pipeline is the object I grabbed from the database, which stores the definition. And the pipeline run method is a generator. And we, I, I will have an uh, infinite, uh, infinite loop to check each, uh, the, each pipe, the pipeline yard. So for example, in Python, you can send, you can send a value to the pipeline iterator. Uh, So I will use this line as an example. Well, the pipeline run got caught, and it will yard the ADD1 pipeline first. So in the, in the first time, the, the yard value will be the, the, pipe, the ADD1 pipe here. So yard, yard it is the pipeline A. And then I store the next value to, I transfer the yard to future object here, is the next value, and then send back to here again. So the V is the, is the, the future of the AD, ADD1. And then for the pipeline B, it uses the, the future of the pipeline A as the as the input. So the pipeline B will know that, or in fact, it depends on the result of the pipeline A, and it will record it to the database. So or we can uh, record the relationship between, between the pipes. So in short, the control loops use Python's yard feature to do all the magic behind. A pipeline may execute several child pipelines by yard then one by one, and the control loop proceeds this pipeline one by one, one by one, and transform them to future object with dependency information inside. The future, the future object later will send back to current pipeline with the, the, the send method, and the pipeline pass this feature to other child pipelines depends on it. So it's very, very easy, right? So uh, here's another example, which is more useful. And for example, if I want to define my own search engine, and we, I can write code like this. So if, for example, uh, I have a, a lot of website I want to index, and uh, <coughs> I use a, a WordCon URL task here, and it can be just a pen over, the, over here. And, the, and after all the tests done, I want to uh, calculate the summation of the results. And, and it is important to know, notice that the, the sum method cannot be run until all the work on URL has been done. And it is non-blocking execution by, because the, on the cluster, no computer will wait the result by the design of the jungle P. So everything is asynchronous. There's no IO, no, there are no waiting for, for the task execution. So by this kind of definition, by this kind of design, task can run on different machines asynchronously, and the complex text can easily spread over the clusters. So finally, with jungle P, it can uh, it can do the dependency resolution automatically, and it has the ability to do the workflow management. And finally, it can run the task asynchronized on cluster by the support of the Django queue. And there are some advanced flow, flow control uh, abilities for it. For example, we can force tests run one after another by using the pipeline in order features. So by defining a pipeline like this, I can guarantee that all the, these three tasks will 
uh, it will run in order. So the first, the, the, so the, so the local message, this line will be run first, and then later this one, and then this, this one. But the local message will run before, run immediately. So I can do some further uh, flow control. And this is another way to use uh, Django P to control the flow. So I can define the relationship that, that which, which pipe need to wait another pipe. So the delay will wait, the delay pipe will wait the log message, and the log message will wait the, wait the delay. OK. So all these features are my current, uh, my current work. And there are some more future works for further improve the, the framework. For example, I can make the pipeline more functional. So, so that means I can guarantee that uh, if the task has been uh, run before, it will never run again. And it, I can do some uh, further advanced life cycle control, for example, the pipe, pi pipeline finalize retry. And even more, I can edit some human uh, operator, operators. For example, the, this is a, a very long work, very long test flow. And, but we can, uh, well, it, it, well, it runs for the five steps. And it will send an email for the operators and the asset, do you want to continue or not? And the, the, the whole work will hold by there. And unless you click the, the email links, and to tell that the pipeline should be continued or stopped. So this is a very new project. So if you have interest in it, please contribute. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Hey, 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 Make a step will回到硬碟這樣子。OK,很好的問題哦。那那個其實Luigi的跟Luigi的比較是一個很重要的部分,只是那個東西比較難解釋,所以我英文解釋不出來,所以我就沒有把它放在Talk裡面。那Jungle okay, P跟Luigi 他的執行狀況是放在Database裡面的 它只能定一個非常非常簡單的一個一層的關係。但是在Jungle 這樣子會是另外一個,所以它會現在定義定義,它會變得很細索,就是它會把每一個工作跟它的dependency就要定義成一個,其實它會變得很就很就很啰嗦啦,但是我在Jungle P跟Pipeline裡頭,我其實只要